here it's decentralized. And so you can talk to me, but I'm not Cardano. You can talk to the Cardano Foundation, but they're not Cardano. So in the absence of executive function, there's an abnormally higher coordination problem. And you have to actually work at getting things done. And uh, people will be willing to do that if they think there's a large ROI. But nobody's making the case that there's a good ROI there. So from a strictly business situation, it's too in a, unapproachable to, to get in. So, you know, you just got to work it. And what's nice about Midnight is it's a little bit more centralized right now because it's being launched. So there's a single voice, single authority, 100 plus deals in one year, one every three days. So it shows you what you can do when you have a little bit of that. The big conversation for the on-chain governance of Cardano, can we get to a point where we can get some delegated executive authority? Okay, so then we can delegate to a group of people, say this group of people is in charge of this thing. And if they fail, according to some set of KPIs, we'll fire them or revoke the authority, but they speak on behalf of the ecosystem. Then it's so much easier to get things done. Uh, like this sovereign wealth one has been a nightmare to deal with right now. Uh, you, you, you know, uh, I proposed it and I said, okay, you have a governing council, but then they hire an asset manager and the asset manager manages it like they would anything else. And we can then place that $50 million worth of stable coin. And then all of a sudden, all these people run around and say, we don't want to pay an asset manager. We want every investment decision to be decided by direct democracy and all this other stuff. So it's just, it's just not a real thing. It's not a real proposal. And, and so the community has to get over that as well. They have, to, they have to put on the ground saying, okay, if you want good marketing, give a function to give delegated authority for somebody to do that. If you want good events, give delegated authority to somebody to go and do that. If you want good commercial negotiations, Give delegated authority for somebody to go and do that. And you know, you got a $1.5 billion treasury backing this. So there's real money there backing this type of stuff. We can make deals. We can deploy capital. We just need to get over this hump of no one's in charge and therefore nothing gets done. That's where Bitcoin's at right now. And they have network effects. So that's why they can tolerate uh, that stuff. But strategically speaking, you know, the partner chains model, if Midnight is successful, Every year, we're going to get partner changes. Which means being as an ADA holder, you can get numerous revenue streams as well as more airdrops. At Bitcoin, De DeFi can bring in billions of dollars worth of TVL into our ecosystem. And we're the closest, technologically speaking, to Bitcoin. When we, you're, we're UTXO, they're UTXO. It's a lot harder to do Bitcoin DeFi on Ethereum or do it on Solana or these other things. So we have a lot of narratively speaking and technologically speaking, built-in benefits and advantages if we want to pursue them and good business opportunities. But we need to coordinate better and we need to speak with one voice as an ecosystem. And we got to get, we got to get past this hump and, and get out of the toxicity of the past. How much of this? So, you know, one of my, and, and I'm sure, and I know you've talked about this here and there, uh, uh, probably enough that I shouldn't have to ask this question, but how did this whole trifecta between all of these entities, which Cardano Foundation, Emergo, IOHK, how, what birthed these three organizations in a way that enables them to seemingly do very little for the ecosystem while holding substantial sums yeah. of value in capital? Well, you know, it, ultimately it's my final fault because I helped create Cardano. I was the big guy. And uh, the way the tripartite structure was set up was that there were kind of three buckets of roles. And so somebody had to worry about the science and engineering. I was closest to that, so I took it. Somebody had to worry about governance and being the neutral third party and the community management and, and basically getting the ecosystem's brand and reputation out there. That was the foundation. And then somebody had to worry about the commercialization, kind of like consensus to Ethereum, the Joe Lubin of Ethereum, right? So Emergo was to take that role. Well, Emergo was made up of people who did the sale of ADA. So they had a lot of leverage in the relationship because they brought all the money. You know, that crowd sale was $72 million. It was 108,000 Bitcoin because we were getting Bitcoin at the lowest price was $250. So, you know, it was a different time. So when all that money came in, you know, most of their endowment, there was a perception on their side that that was kind of a reward for getting Cardano to exist. There weren't strong controls over deliverables of Emergo must do X, Y, and Z, A, B, and C. There was always this perception that they would take their endowment, 
and they would deploy it into the ecosystem into a for-profit sense. And there were numerous efforts throughout the years for that, but it was a lot of like, not a lot, you know, too little, too late type of a type of a deal. There's a new leadership there, Phil, and we get along super well. And, uh, and I think he actually has a very strong desire to, to really do aggressive things. Like I was holding the Cardano card and he really wants to build up USDA and Uroi and these other things. They just, they don't have the capital that they used to have, you know, that's been distributed. So their impact is not going to be as big as consensus. Um, and I think they can carve out some great businesses and do some great things. But, you know, Amergo never gets in the way. They don't show up and say, we're going to do everything in our power to hurt input output or fuck Charles and he's a bad actor and we have to protect the ecosystem from it. If we ask them to do something, if it's within their power to do it, they'll try to do it. And so they've been a good partner from that perspective. The foundation is a different animal. From the very beginning, uh, there were issues with it. So the initial leader was Michael Parsons and the initial foundation was started in the Isle of Man out in the UK. And uh, it was called Digital Asset Foundation. And the original foundation, I actually had founder rights with. So if Michael did something wrong, um, we had a path to get rid of him. So what Michael did is through a very clever series of things, he was able to reincorporate the foundation and move the assets over to Switzerland. And he made himself the founder of that foundation in Switzerland. And then he proceeded to do some things that a lot of people were uncomfortable with, the Guardians of Cardano showed up. And when the Guardians of Cardano showed up, we were able to get Michael pushed out. So then there was a brief window of time where Amergo and Input Output were the majority controllers of the foundation in Switzerland. So three of the five board seats belonged to IO and Amergo. And there was two Swiss members because it's required that you have to have Swiss people. So uh, Tamara Hassan and Nico Aquiris and uh, Menmeet Singh were the big people there.